Hello, I'm Mark Stoner, and I'm going to share with you a bit. Um, I'm a Lancaster County native, grew up here, and on both sides of my family, my parents came from Mennonite families, but we grew up Methodist, uh, mostly because my mother always resisted joining the Mennonite, a uh, rather plain Mennonite church, and uh, had a friend who was Methodist. Um, so the environment I came in, although church was a big thing and we attended regularly and I was very active through you know my childhood and uh, teenage years um, it never was thing something that had a lot of dogma I mean I my parents always uh, strove for you to think for yourself and so that led me to college I was involved with a chancel choir up at Penn State and I really enjoyed that time after the sermons we'd have discussions over lunch and of course those discussions were very wide-ranging with people really presenting their opinions and ideas as to what had been uh, in the sermon and then I found myself coming home over the summer one year and attending a Sunday school class that the focus was on relationships and it gave a very traditional biblical you know god husband uh wife dog uh view of the universe and that really turned me off that year i felt like there were these young couples that i had known for years and years that no one was disagreeing with what was in this workbook not even what was in the bio but just the way the workbook presented it and I just felt no one was being authentic or truthful in any way in how they actually lived their life. I'd known them forever. Um, and I, at the time, was also dealing with my own sexuality and how I brought my spirituality into that. And um, at that time, I felt like I had a vested interest in some of the clobber passages, the anti-gay verses that are taken out of the Bible um, so I I didn't really decide on that but I looked at the verses that were used against women and I really thought there's no way I could agree with that you know this this just can't be my interpretation of the Bible and um, so I kind of left regular church attendance after college and really, you know, was only a holiday attender for a couple decades. Um, and then I always did like to volunteer and things like that. I was involved in several of the local gay LGBT organizations. Um, and through that, my one neighbor was a associate pastor at First United Methodist Church in Lancaster and they were having a discussion on how they could become more opening and this is about 2007 or so and um f from that discussion they invited people from different uh denominations and it was kind of decided that there needed to be some uh f faith gr or a group that would represent people of faith that might not just be the conservative side because that was pretty much what you heard from um, in the local press at that time and so uh, there was a group called embrace that was formed and I became active in that even though I still wasn't a regular church attender but through that the one retired pastor that attended First United Methodist his name was Bill Cherry um, and is well he's no longer with us but he was just one of those people who just kind of light emanated from him and he gave me a very genuine invitation to come attend First Church um, and I had gotten invitations before to some churches that <laughs> um, weren't the same type of invitation a lot of times when LGBT people are are invited to a church you go with a lot of suspicion as to what the motives are and that first time I, I went first of all the pastor then Bill Lentz in his sermon gave a very 
affirming statement to LGBT people. You felt included. And I was also invited by a person up into a Sunday school class and the discussions there were very interesting. So I ended up being moved emotionally to just that the, at the service and feeling there's you know some connection here that I really need to explore a, a bit more. Um, and actually the inside of the church uh, looked almost exactly like the church I grew up in, but it was a bigger church. So that's why <laughs> there was some hominess, but I, I felt that it was more expansive. And so I became involved there and actually ended up joining the United Methodist Church. And well, I, I was always a United Methodist Church member, but uh, actually joining the First United Methodist Church in Lancaster. And um, also being active in the Embrace group. Um, you know, I really, it's so important that God's message gets out to all people and that all people are treated equally. I, you know, I, and that's where a church that is actually welcoming makes such a difference. Um, you know, as a gay man, I, when I see all are welcome on a church sign, I don't assume that all are welcome unless they really show me signs and prove it. Um, and that's where things like affirming statements or even putting a rainbow flag out or things like that do help signal and make someone feel more comfortable because I feel like I didn't even have it that bad. I thought my parents were always pretty supportive, but so many people have just been battered and bruised by the treatment of religious groups that I'm amazed many of them want to come back. Um, and it's been interesting at First Church because um, different pastors are switched out and it's not necessarily, although the church has some approval on it, it's really done at a higher level. Um, and so in 2015, we have a new pastor who's very conservative. Now he would not be rabidly anti-gay. He doesn't make many statements that are directly anti-gay, um, but the tone is no longer at all welcoming. And I feel it differs a lot from the congregation. Um, and I don't, I'm sure most of you know the Methodist denomination is struggling, is still struggling with, uh, how they're going to deal with it on a uh, at the denomination level if there's going to be a split and I have remained a member at First Church mostly because I feel like I have not been that scarred and I can represent myself as a gay man and if they are going to change their welcome at that church that at least there's someone at the church that they can look at and represent the the damage they they do to people um and that's another reason for the congress uh, at first church uh, we've always tried to keep it very non-threatening and have discussions to lead the congregation the majority of the congregation to the point but we never had had any kind of a vote or anything before uh, 2015 and so with this pastor trying to kind of take us the other way he he is very supportive to the like the very conservative wing of the Methodist Church um, I pray that we don't find ourselves in some super conservative denomination because that hasn't been what the church has been it's been a broad spectrum of ideas and I actually kind of like the the range of ideas. I, I don't mind being around people that might not necessarily agree exactly with what I believe. I think you learn a lot from people that are different from you, and I'm hoping to still be in a church like that. Um, so that's a little bit of my journey, and uh, 
thank you for inviting me.